So this is going to be the video for homework 5, question 7. What question 7 asks is for us to find the slope in the equation of the tangent line to the graph of the function f at the specified point, and then they give us a function and they give us a point. So that's, uh, that's a lot of words. Let's figure out what that means and uh, what we're actually looking for. So let's start with the function that they gave us. They give us f of x equals the square root of x plus 1 over the square root of x. And the point that they give us that we're going to be interested in a little bit later, not right away, but it is going to be important, is uh, 25 in the x-coordinate and 26 over 5 in the y-coordinate. So this is the function and this is the point. So we are going to want the slope of the line that's tangent to this function at this point. Um, and to find the slope of the line that's tangent to a function, we're going to have to take a derivative. Um, square roots, those don't lend themselves very well to taking derivatives just the way that you look at them, but it's very easy to rewrite them so that we can use the power rule that we learned about. So let's go ahead and write this so that instead of square roots, we've got exponents. So f of x, well, the square root of x is the same as x to the one-half power. So we'll write that as x to the one-half. And the square root of 1 or 1 over the square root of x is the same as 1 over x to the 1 half. And that's close to what we want. That's not bad, but I think I could get this better. We really don't want anything in the denominator so that we can do our power rule. So I have x to the 1 half. And if it's in the denominator and I want to bring it into the numerator, I keep the exponent, but I change the sign. So now we have x to the 1 half plus x to the negative one-half. That's fantastic, because now we can do the power rule. So we want to take the derivative of this function right here. We're going to do f prime of x, so that's our derivative. And the power rule tells us to bring down the exponent, so one-half, that becomes the new coefficient in front of our x, and then x, and then we have to subtract one from whatever that exponent was before. So one-half minus one is going to be negative one-half. And we're going to do the same thing for the next part. I'm actually going to put a parenthesis here because we're going to have to carry down this negative. So we bring down the negative one half, and then it's x, and then we need negative one half minus one. Negative one half minus one is negative three halves. So now we've uh, got our derivative. I think we could probably write this out a little bit neater in a way that's going to be more useful for us. So let's, uh, let's kind of condense this down a bit. So this gives me 1 over 2 times x to the 1 half. I just kind of brought the, uh, the exponent, or I brought the x down and again changed the signs on the exponent. And then this will be a minus sign. I'm going to use that minus sign there. That's 1 over 2x to the 3 halves. Okay, so I think we've got a derivative. I think this is something that we can work with. So we know the, the formula, now we just need to plug in a point to figure out exactly what that, uh, that slope is going to be at that point. And the point that they gave us, way back up here, was 25 and uh, 26 over 5. What can I plug into my derivative? I can plug an x in. This one was the x value, the 25 was the x value, so I am going to take f of 25 and that is going to tell me what the slope is at the point 25. So I have 1 over 2 times 25 to the 1 half minus 1 over 2 times oops 25 <laughs> to the 3 halves. We're not used to looking at exponents that way, but I think we can figure it out. We know that 1 half means square root, so I, I think I can do that, and I think you could probably do that if you thought about it a little bit. So that's 1 over 2 times the square root of 5, or <laughs> 2 times the square root of 25, giving away the answer there. So 1 over 2 times the square root of 25, that's 2 times 5. And then over here we have, not that you can read it anymore, uh, 1 over 2 times, well we've got the 3 halves, so that's like taking the square root and raising it to the third power. So that's 2 times the square root of 25, which is 5, and then we're going to raise that 
to the third power. Okay, we're getting close. We're getting really, really close. I should probably move to a new sheet of paper. Um, let's keep this here so that we can kind of see what's going on now. I apologize for the horrible camera setup. This was kind of a last minute thing that I did here. Hopefully, I will be able to find a better solution than dangling my cell phone off of a lamp. But for the time being, this is what we've got, so we're gonna make it work. Okay, so I have one over two times five. That's one tenth. Okay, one over two times five to the third. Feel free at this point to plug it into your calculator. It's absolutely okay to do that, or you could try to do it in your head if you wanted to. Well, uh, five to the third power, let's see, five squared is 25, and then times five again is gonna be 125. So two times 125 gives us one over 250. And then I just need to get uh, common denominators, so I need to make this have, I need to make both of these have the same denominator. Um, we're not going to go over basic fraction rules. I think you guys can figure this out. I'll get 25 over 250 minus 1 over 250. And that's going to give me 24 over 250. And I think I can divide both of those by 2, which is going to be the same as 12 over 125. That's not the kind of numbers we usually see in fractions, but that's actually what we're looking for. So on number seven in the box next to slope, this would be the answer if you had the same numbers that I did. But if you go through these steps with the numbers that you had, whatever you come up with here is going to be the answer for the slope at that point. And then what they want after that is they want the actual formula for the tangent line at that point, I believe. Yep, yep, they want the actual formula for the tangent line. So we know what the slope is, and we have the point slope formula that tells us m times x minus x1 equals y minus y1. Well, up here we had those point, the point that we needed, and right here we have the slope that we need. So we have m, that's 12 over 125, times x minus x1. Well, x1 was the 25 up here, equals y minus y1. Well, y1 is this 26 over 5 here, so minus 26 over 5. We do a little jockeying around of the sides, and ultimately the answer that we end up with is going to be y equals 12 over 125 times x minus 25 plus 26 over 5. And that's going to be the answer that you put in. They've already got the y equals, so what you're going to enter into the second blank in problem number 7 is going to look something like this. You don't have to simplify it any further. Uh, WebAssign will take it just like that if you want to. If you want to practice multiplying fractions and, uh, and you want to make that look a little bit more like the y equals mx plus b, you're more than welcome to. But this is all you need for WebAssign. So that's, uh, that's the video for homework five, question number seven.